So we're in lesson 6-2. Opposite sides of parallelogram are congruent. Those little airplane or triangle looking things tell you that these are parallel. The, the hash marks, this one has one and this one has one, tells you that these are congruent. This one has two and this one has two. It tells you that those are congruent. Opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. So angle A is congruent to angle C, and angle B is congruent to angle D. The diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So when those diagonals meet up in the middle, it divides US into two congruent segments, and it divides RT into two congruent segments. Now, don't confuse that with me saying the diagonals are congruent. That's not what happens. The diagonals get cut into two congruent parts. US is not the same size as RT, but each piece of US <coughs> is the same length. Theorem 6-4 says, if three or more parallel lines cut off congruent segments on one transversal, so you've got three parallel lines You've got this transversal. If A or if if this this segment is congruent to this segment, then the three parallel lines are the same distance from each other, right? Well, if they're parallel and they're the same distance from each other right here, they're also going to be the same distance from each other over there, because that's what parallel means, right? They don't they don't move. Then they cut off. congruent segments on every transversal. So you can mark those two congruent as well. Now, they are not the same size as these. They're just congruent to each other. So <coughs> BD is congruent to DF. Consecutive angles of a polygon share a common side. Consecutive means right next to each other. J and K are consecutive angles. They share side JK. Angle K and angle L are consecutive. They share side KL. In this parallelogram, angle J and angle M are consecutive, as are J and K and which one is J not consecutive with? It's the only angle here that J is not consecutive with. If it's consecutive with K and it's consecutive with M, then it's not consecutive with L. They do not share a common side. They're not consecutive. Find the value of X in parallelogram ABCD. Then find the measure of angle A. Okay. In this parallelogram, they told me for sure it's a parallelogram. So those things that I wrote down on the previous page, I know are true. Here's what I know about this picture. If they tell me it's a parallelogram, I know for a fact opposite sides are congruent. Does that help me any? Did they tell me anything about the sides of this figure? What did they tell you about this figure? They told you about the angles. Well, the opposite angles are congruent. So do you think that will help me? Did they give you the opposite angles in this picture? So we know they have to be congruent. So x plus 15 equals 135 minus x because opposite angles are congruent. Now, they want you to add x to each side. So I get 2x plus 15 equals 135. What do you think the next step would be? Subtract 15 from each side, so 2x is 120. Do you need something to write with? 
What do we do next? Divide by 2. So x is 60. Now we have to find the measure of angle A. Well, in order to do that, we're going to have to find the measure of angle B. The measure of angle B is 60 plus 15, which is 75. So this angle is 75 degrees. Now we learned on Friday that consecutive angles of a parallelogram are supplementary. A and B are consecutive angles, which means that they are supplementary. What's the word supplementary mean? <coughs> 180. So 75 plus what is going to give me 180? Track 75 from each side. Measure of angle A is 105. Okay, next problem. So find the values of X and Y in this parallelogram. When they put that symbol there, or this quadrilateral, they're telling you that's a quadrilateral. What kind of uh, information are they giving me here? Let's see. The diagonals are crossing. What did they tell me about the diagonals on the previous page? The diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other, which means that this piece right here, which is X, is the same as 7Y minus 16. Well, I can't solve that because it's got X and Y involved in it. And it also means that 2x plus 5, this section right here, is equal to 5y. And I can't solve that either because it's got x and y in it. Well, if x is equal to 7y minus 16, then I can use it in place of x in that problem. So we're using geometry, and then we're also going back and using some algebra. So we're going to have to solve systems. So we're going to put this in place of x. And then this equation has only y in it. So I put 7y minus 16 in place of x. Then what would you do next? Distribute. 2 times 7y is 14y. 2 times negative 16 is negative 32. Plus 5 is equal to 5y. Do you have any questions on that? Anybody? Everybody caught up with me? What's the next thing you need to do? You need to combine those. So this is 14y minus 32 plus 5 is going to give you minus 27. Okay. What's the next step? Subtract that uh, 14y from each side, so that'd be negative 9y. Divide both sides by negative 9, and y is 3. Okay, so I figured out that y is 3. I still have to figure out what x is. So you're going to go right back up here. x is 7 times y minus 16, and I just figured out that y is 3. So what is 7 times 3? 21 minus 16 is 5. So x is 5 and y is 3. Do you have questions on that problem? Everybody got it? Okay. Next page.
using theorem 6-4, if three or more parallel lines cut off congruent segments on one transversal, then they cut off congruent segments on all transversals. Explain how to divide a blank card into five equal rows using theorem 6-4. Place a corner of the top of the card on the first line of the paper. Place a corner that forms a consecutive angle on the sixth line. Mark the point. We're not going to do that part. We're going to go down here. We're going to check our understanding here. Find a value of Y and then find E, F, G, and H. <coughs> what do you know about these two angles? They're equal. So 6Y plus 4 is equal to 3Y plus 37. What do you do to solve? Subtract 3y. Subtract 4. Divide. y is 11. Okay, if y is 11, then I need to plug it in. I'm going to use this one first. 3 times 11 plus 37. 33 plus 37 is 34. 70. So this angle is 70 degrees. Well, what's angle E? 70 degrees as well because they're congruent, right? What about the other two angles in the picture? They're congruent to each other. They're supplementary with these, so this this one has to be 110, and so does this one. Okay, problem two. It's a diagonal problem. This piece of the diagonal is congruent to this piece, so A equals B plus 2. And this part is congruent to this part. So B plus 10 equals 2A minus H. Now, I can't solve either one of those because they contain two different letters. So I'm going to have to use another method like substitution. For example, A is equal to B plus 2. So in place of A, I'm going to put B plus 2. So it's going to say B plus 10 equals 2 times B plus 2 minus H. B plus 10 equals 2B plus 4 minus H. B plus 10 equals 2B minus 4. Subtract B from each side. It's going to say 10 equals B minus 4. Add 4. B is equal to 14. If B is equal to 14, what's A equal to? 14 plus 2, which is 16. So A is 16 and B is 14. example. In this figure, DH is parallel to CG, is parallel to BF, is parallel to AE. And they tell you right here that these parallel lines cut off equal segments. So if they cut off equal segments on this transversal, they'll do the same on this transversal. So if this is 2.5, this is 2.5, and this is 2.5. So the question says, find EH. What's EH? 
EH is that entire segment. How long is that? 7.5. 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 2.5 is 7.5. So in your textbook, page 297, we can do 1 through 22 all. Sixty-three through sixty-six. All. 